The 1948 presidential primary in New Hampshire was a vote solely for delegates. There was a lot of dissatisfaction with that, and it, it seemed to me the time was ripe for us to try an experiment where uh, the prominent uh, political figures in each party could be put on the ballot and there could be a, pr a preference expressed like, by the voters of each state, which would guide the delegates. We didn't know how well it would work, but the first time around in 1952, it worked exceedingly well. Uh, my name is Keith Thompson, and I was employee number one at WEVO. Must, must have been 1982 when we did our first election coverage. We had uh, Apple computers with VisiCalc, which is like Excel. We loaded in all of the historical data that we could find. We wanted to make projections, and this was our very high-tech way of making projections. And it was all just done on a single spreadsheet. Good evening from Concord. I'm Clark Dumont, and this is WEVO's coverage of the 1984 New Hampshire presidential primary. The first presidential primary, by the way, which WEVO has the pleasure to bring to you, the state of New Hampshire. We are here tonight with Hello. our Hi, staff. Gene. This is Clark Dumont. Gene, uh, tell us all about it. Well, it looks like um, we're going to have a solid first place here in New Hampshire. I am surprised. I am delighted and surprised. There were certain stories that were always in the background. Uh, my name is Jim Van Dungen. And the 88 presidential primary was open in both parties. And of course, we got a lot of attention nationally because of that. And we tried to maintain our New Hampshire identity in these covering. But it meant chasing a lot of candidates all over the place. And there were only three and a half of us. Yeah, and, and one, one guy, Bill, had to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning so he could put the station on the air. So yeah, it was, it was pretty difficult. Good evening and welcome to Election 88 on WEVO New Hampshire Public Radio. I'm Martin Murray, along with me, political analysts and uh, Professor Richard Winters of the Rockefeller Center at Dartmouth College. And I can tell you that the um, figures nationally show George Bush in the lead over Michael Dukakis, 58% to 42%. Uh, Bush has won two states. I'm first, I'm pleased to announce my decision to appoint Governor John Sununu as uh, chief of staff for my administration. And John Sununu has the background and the experience necessary to work not only with his, his former colleagues in the nation's state. I am uh, honored and gratified at the opportunity to serve as chief of staff. I am eager to take up the challenge. It is going to be, I think, a very important few years. We had two weeks to get this thing on the air, and then we opened the mics on October 9th, 1995. Good morning. I'm Laura Kanoya, New Hampshire Public Radio, and this is The Exchange. And you know what our first show was? This is so interesting, given what we're seeing right now going on, was the um, stresses within the Republican Party. The Republican Party was born out of frustration with the ruling Democratic Party. And according to New Hampshire, Well, between mid-April when the first spot aired on WMUR and November 30th, between 25 and $30 million has been spent to air more than 14,000 ads on uh, New Hampshire and Boston stations. At least three quarters... This is Morning Edition on NHPR. I'm Rick Ganley. Let's go now live to NHPR's Josh Rogers, who is in Cleveland at the GOP convention. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Rick. You got to uh, Cleveland last night, Josh. You hung out with some of the uh, the delegates from New Hampshire. What are they making of the experience of attending the, co the convention so far? Well, you know, it depends a lot on who you talk to. Several of them were, were eager to immediately argue that the failed effort by the delegates who opposed Donald Trump, the so-called Never Trump movement, was... Is, and also in Philadelphia this week is NHPR's Casey McDermott. She joins us on the line now. Hey, Casey. Hey, Peter. What went on at breakfast this morning? So um, Howard Dean was echoing what we heard from a lot of the party leaders throughout this convention. Um, his speech focused on the importance of, at this point, continuing on and backing. 